So my sister, uh, I have two sisters, but my sister down in Cork uh, was out shopping for a children's seat, you know these, what are they called, children's seat, child, car chair, what, high chair, no for the car, car seat, booster car seat thing, great, so she's there shopping and um, so she, she was in, you know what I mean, they're all lined out there and uh, she has a look and she goes, oh that, that one's nice, yeah, and it's, you know, it's, it's narrow enough that I can fit two in because now she's got two kids, so I can fit two in and a bit of the, the shopping in between them and then the assistant comes over and is, you know, pointing out the pros and cons and the various types of fixtures and features that it has for attaching itself to the car and ones that have a tray and ones that don't and ones that have a five point locking system harness with, uh, and um, yeah, and then, then of course the, the assistant said, and of course this one, this one is um, has an, a grade A safety rating. So this has been side impact tested. The rest of them haven't. And then she looked at the price tag, and it's like, well, it was much more than I would say what it was. Yeah, it was okay. About three hundred euro, about three hundred euro, because this one is side impact protected. And there's this kind of you know pregnant pause. As in, of course, that's, that's what you would want for your child because, isn't it? This one is side impact protected, tested. Now, you can go for something cheaper as well. I mean, if you don't love your children, you can buy these. <laughs> okay, if you don't, but if, if you do, this one. This one, this one, this one is side impact protection testing. And she said, okay, well, I suppose that's the one I must get, so really, isn't it? And it was just interesting. She, 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 was, she kind of came out of the shop going, this is really, really... This was really expensive. She was kind of delighted with herself and kind of really annoyed at herself. Did I just get duped? Uh, because, like, I mean, Jeannie, we've all grown up without side impact protection tested car seats, and look at us all here, we're fine. Uh, so, but it was just the, 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 this, this, there's this idea also out in the world that if we love someone, we'll go the extra mile. If you love someone, you'll do that extra bit. You'll give until it hurts, you'll give more. If you love someone, you won't just give the minimum. It, it's, it's, it's kind of obvious, especially around Christmas or anniversaries and uh, all those kind of things. Um, I, had a, 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 I know a person who, who received a gift of uh, a man's watch uh, for a certain number of years of service in, in, in a place where he was working. And um, this fellow now wouldn't be exactly the most generous so he said, uh, thanks very much. And he kept it then for, for his wife for a Christmas present. Now, it, it's a man's watch, you know, a big chunky monkey like, just not very elegant. And so, you know, so this is, and as soon as you hear the, these kind of stories, you go, ooh, that's, that's a bit tight. I remember when I was uh, at my late teens, when I was going out with a certain personage um, and, uh, you know, having to buy like, you know, Christmas gifty, presenty things and uh, necklaces, and you go, well, that one's 20 euro, silver plated, and that one's solid silver, 4,003, I'll take that one, that's, you know, or like, or like the difference between quartz and a diamond, I guarantee you, there is no woman on the face of the planet who can tell the difference between a, lump of, a nicely cut lump of quartz and a diamond. If she's told it's a diamond, I guarantee you she'll believe it's a diamond. I'm not, that's no, no offense to women. It's just, there is no optical difference whatsoever, right? You find a little bit of washed up glass on the seashore, bring it to a jeweler, tell him, cut that now into a nice little pyramid thing and no one will know the difference, it'll save you about 14,000 euro. But, it, but it's, the point is, it's the principle of the thing. It's the principle. I love you so much, I will waste money on you. <laughs> I love you so much, I will give until it hurts. That's obviously why I'm a priest and not married, as you can see. You can see how my, the trajectory of my, my yeah, wasn't really going in the right direction. So, but I love you so much, I will give until it hurts. That's the point. So even though I might maybe have a modest background and can't afford huge things, I will still splash out when it comes to the engagement ring. I will give everything I have. It's a sign of the fact that this is how I will treat you also in marriage. I will give until it hurts. So it's, while it's, got, it's a cultural thing, it's also that there's an important message in it. I will, give, I will not just be giving you the minimum in marriage. I will give everything I have because I love you. Now when it comes to faith, um, I think maybe culturally because we didn't necessarily understand God as Father, because we didn't really see our faith as a relationship but more as an adherence to certain rules or an adherence to certain cultural norms, I think a lot of minimalism crept in 
with our relationship with God. So when it comes to God, what should you give him? Uh, don't kill people and go to Mass once a week. And that's kind of it. And, and the idea of giving anything more than that kind of a minimum, your basic kind of observance of, of, of the commandments, don't kill people, all right? And the basic religious observance, just go to Mass. And so now, that, when I say go to Mass, that means just be physically present in the church. Stand at the back, don't answer, don't sing, don't engage, and leave silently, all right? Typical kind of Irish attendance at Mass, arrive anonymous, leave anonymous. And don't engage, don't be seen, don't be heard, just do your thing. And leave. And that's our attendance at Mass. There you go. Box checked. Right? So if we reduce our faith to certain kind of just cultural norms or religious norms, um, the, the idea of a relationship is, is entirely absent. And therefore, if, if the idea of a relationship is gone, then the idea of love is gone. Because there's no, how can you just love a certain series of rules or cultural norms? That's, that's not a relationship, that's not love. So then the idea of giving more than the absolute minimum is kind of crazy. Why would you give more? Why would you pray every day if you don't have to? Like, there's no rule saying you have to pray every day, so why would I bother? Why, why would you give more than the absolute minimum? On the other hand, if we see our faith as a relationship, and God then as, as a loving father, and Jesus as our, as our as our brother and the Holy Spirit alive and hopefully active within us and our, our blessed lady as our, as our heavenly mother and, and, and heaven as our home and, and God wanting to bring us into this, this divine family in which I've got brothers and sisters and, and all the grace I, I could possibly need or require or want. All of this is available to me. And if I start entering into my faith as, as a relationship, then, then giving more than the, than the minimum starts to make sense. In fact, not just give more than the minimum, but actually give everything. Actually give it all. Give to the Most High as he has given to you, generously, as your means can afford. That was in our reading today from Ecclesiastes, chapter 35, if you're reading through it afterwards. Give to the Most High as he has given to you, generously, as your means can afford. Do not appear empty-handed in the Lord's presence. Do not appear empty-handed in the Lord's presence. It's an interesting idea as well. Do not appear empty-handed in the Lord's presence. So, okay, I come to Mass. What am I exactly supposed to be carrying? What am I supposed to be giving? Sure, I can put some money into the collection box and I can light a few candles. Is that what we're talking about, though? That, that, that is helpful. I mean, obviously, obviously financial assistance of the church is, 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 is necessary. You know, we need, to, we need to keep the thing going. But it's, it's, it's not just that we're talking about. Because that, that's, that's, in a way, that's almost too easy. It's actually been to be no skin off anyone's nose. To be, even though this may sound dramatic for us Irish people, um, if, if we were to put 20 euro into the collection basket as it's going around, I guarantee you, you wouldn't actually even miss it. You know, your, your week will be entirely unaffected, unless things are kind of tight. Um, your week will be entirely unaffected by putting 20 euro into it. You just wouldn't even notice it. So that's not difficult, even though it would be considered quite a, a generous offering for us. But that's not what the Lord is talking about. Just, you know, don't appear empty-handed in the Lord's presence. What do we have to offer him? I think there are, there are a few things we can focus on. One, what can we offer the Lord? We can offer him our prayers. So my intentions. So when I come to the Lord, Lord, I've got this brother, sister, mother, father, friend, person I know who is su suffering from addiction or depression or who's lost or who's in a bad relationship and all these intentions and worries and concerns that we have. That's one thing I'm carrying, absolutely. It would be a shame, though, if, if all I had was that. Because the danger with focusing only on intentions is they can become my focus. So I just keep looking at my problems, my intentions, my worries, my, my, my needs. There's another thing, uh, I, th I think it was St. Faustina said that all I have to offer the Lord really is, is my sins, my misery. Because everything else, anything good he gave to me, anything good that I've achieved, 
it was the Lord who gave me the ability to do it, so I can't take any credit. My sins, on the other hand, that was all me. That was me. Because God didn't make me do it. So they're mine. So we've got intentions and we've got sins. Seems kind of negative so far. So let's, let's tie it all up with a, with a ribbon. Um, how about going to the Lord with a recognition of our intentions, a recognition of our sins, which is actually how we start Mass. We start Mass with a recognition of our sins. We pray our prayers of the faithful during Mass normally. But to do so primarily with love. What does the Lord want from me? Well, in a way, nothing. And in a way, everything. He wants your love. But if we love, then it's absolutely normal. So it's a natural consequence that if I love, I will give generously. I will give of myself generously. So the, everything else that, that the Lord will ask of me afterwards is a consequence of me loving him. What about us? Peter asked Jesus. We've left everything and followed you. Which they did. They left their careers. And now we're wandering around as itinerant preachers with no program. No idea what they were doing the following day. And just kind of, Jesus knew. But maybe didn't necessarily sit down and show the apostles the itinerary for the next month. We've left everything. What, what, what are we going to get? What kind of security? What's the uh, retirement package in this whole deal? I tell you solemnly, which means this is, pay attention, this one's serious. I tell you solemnly, there is no one who has left house, brothers, sisters, father, children, or land for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not be repaid a hundred times over. Not without persecutions. It was all going so well to that point, really, wasn't it? <laughs> not without persecutions. Now, in this present time, and in the world to come, eternal life. So, that we will be blessed here, and ultimately, we'll be blessed in heaven for all eternity. Now, the blessing here, again, shouldn't be understood as uh, the prosperity gospel, that if we give money to the church, we're going to get it back a hundredfold. That's quite a good investment, even better than buying stock on Amazon. But that's not exactly what the Lord is talking about. When we give generously to the Lord, what we receive in return is far more important than any money or, or property or boats or houses or pools. All that stuff is ridiculous in comparison to what the Lord actually offers us. Inner peace. Peace. You know, to be content with oneself. To be able to love those around is far, far more important. Give to the Most High as he has given to you. Generously as your means can afford. For the Lord is a good rewarder and he will reward you seven times over. Do not appear empty-handed in the Lord's presence. For all things are due under the commandment. So we ask the Lord to teach us to love generously, to love him generously. To give yes until it hurts. Because that is the essence of love. Amen.